Hello, my friends. All right, so playing better pentatonic solos, right? Check out part one that I have in the description below if you haven't already. And then uh, I do have two other videos that are also in the description of the part one video uh, where you kind of get around the guitar neck a little bit, right? In, in learning that in those positions of the pentatonic, as you're learning the theory behind the pentatonic is really the best way to do it. Um, I always think about like, it, it really just becomes memorizing, you know, dots on a chart, like a scale chart or, um, or just numbers on strings. Uh, if we're not adding the theory in, in the why behind what it is that we're doing. So in the last video, in the part one, we talked a lot about tension, resolution, tension, resolution, uh, and, and, and some of the neutral notes, you know, the four and the five. Okay. Um, and, and building a little bit more of a conversation. Okay, love that. It's very much focused on the last note of the phrase. Um, I prefer a lot of direct repetition with newer clients. You know, if we are doing tension and resolution, if you watch part one, um, and I have a tension lick. Cool. I prefer the exact same thing. And just literally adding one more note for the, the response, for the, for the resolution. This gets our ear trained for direct repetition, okay? Uh, when we find ourselves noodling around, right, the, the sort of like directionless solo, uh, solos, um, uh, what we're doing is we're sort of stating something, right, and then it sort of becomes a run-on sentence. Uh, and what it reminds me of, honestly, is like a little kid, like sort of like, I, I'm, actually, I'm actually in my school. I just got done teaching a uh, uh, pre-K class, <laughs> pre-K music class, right? So in that instance, they'll have something to say to me. We like sort of tug it on my sleeve, like, oh, Mr. Ryan, uh, today at lunch I did this, and then today uh, after school I'm gonna do this, and oh, yesterday I fell down on it. So nothing they're saying really has anything to do with what they just said, right? So we, as communicators, want to tie everything together. So, if we use direct repetition, tension, and then direct repetition, resolution, we know we're absolutely talking uh, to the last point or speaking to the last point that we just made, right? Communicating a little bit more of a story. Obviously, absolute direct repetition is not something that we're gonna wanna carry on. Now, it's a tool, right? Uh, if you are doing direct repetition, it would be great to start stepping away from direct repetition. Um, as to not make that you're tired. If I have a constant my next phrase right, it's going to start getting like, oh man, I need a little bit more variation. So what I love is if we take the rhythmic variation now, the rhythmic phrase, right, and uh, add a little bit to it, subtract a little bit to it, maybe, or the rhythm is a direct repetition, right? So if I have like, um, right, same exact rhythm, and then I add it, just that, that uh, those last three notes on the end, right? We can start making those changes once we get very comfortable direct repetition, rhythmic repetition, and then you're starting to say like, okay, all right, I don't need to repeat exactly what I just said, right? But it's close enough where it, it, it's tied to what I just said, you know? Um, and that becomes really, really important. So now that's the next stage. Can you play something? If you're getting really good with playing a lick the same exact way twice, cool, play a lick and then feed off of that rhythm. Same, same sort of rhythmic, rhythmic stanza. Now we, you know, uh, just try that. Try that actually right now. See if you can come up with a phrase you can build tension, you can build resolution if you would like. Um, that's not the, the absolute purpose of this, where it's just like if you come up with a lick. Okay, two different directions. Two, one, one sort of went, went uh, melodically downward and one went melodically upward, but the rhythmic phrase was the same. Um, get used to that. Now all you really need to do is you sort of you sort of come up with this da, 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 whatever the rhythm is, and you're just mimicking that, right? And 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 then you're sort of just sketching it out with the pentatonic, right? Almost not knowing exactly where it's going to go yet, but at least the rhythm is the same, right? So so you're not sure melodically what's going to happen, but rhythmically you are. Just give it a shot right now. If I just sort of do this, I'm just going to stay in A. I'm not even going to do changes, right? Whatever that rhythm is. You can always just rewind, 
right back to this part and just sort of keep trying it. Or of course putting the backing track on. that set sets in you know again can I go well, two two resolution phrases right um, now when that starts to get settled in and we're sort of taking the melody away what I mean by taking the melody away is I'm really just focused on that rhythm moving my fingers as I please through the pentatonic then what I can do is go back to part one and take the direct repetition, melodic call response, neutral phrases that I was working on and put those now into direct rhythmic repetition. So if I... Right, two of the exact same phrases and then I just added the resolution there, like sort of on the end. Um, now I'm melodically um, uh, sort of, I have a map of where, where this wants to go, rhythmically and melodically. That is the game right there, right? When we can really do it. The, 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 the steps, and it seemingly happens like that, right? It seemingly happens at the same time. Uh, cognitively, I don't know if it's the same time or if it's in steps. But usually, if somebody says like, hey, let's, like, let's jam on this, right? Cool. Already, I start forming a rhythmic path that then I decide where melodically it wants to go. And I'll never get lost. It doesn't matter where I'm starting, right? I could start absolutely anywhere within the pentatonic, and I'm not going to get myself lost. Um, and, and I have this rhythmic guideline, you know, of what I want to say. And then the melodic guideline, the melodic step happens, I feel like, after, right? Not exactly at the same time. Seemingly at the same time but I'm starting with rhythm first, right? And it, it's just like having a conversation. If I'm in Spain and I have to communicate with somebody, I have to take my time, you know what I mean? I'm sure my, you know, my, my syllables are off, right? My emphasis is, my, I'm emphasizing the wrong syllables, right? Um, you know, my, my speech cadence is probably wrong, you know, and that's because I don't know the language. So this, the more you get comfortable with it, the, the rhythm, the cadence, right, the, the, the emphasis on certain syllables, notes, right, and, and melodically where you want it to go starts to happen seemingly at the same time, you know, and you're able to speak. I don't know exactly what it is I'm going to say next in this video. I do not have it scripted, you know, but I'm not getting super caught up, you know, and in, in, in sort of like, oh, what do I do now? What do I do now, right? Uh, and that's the same thing with this sort of like we're working on rhythm and we're working on like melodic rhythm, melodic rhythm, melodic. We can put it together. OK. Um, and now we're really getting somewhere. Right. We're really building off. Now we can also start looking at this like uh, songwriting. Right. And that that's what my particular degree is. So I went I went for guitar performance at Berkeley f first and then now I'm getting a degree and then an M.A. in songwriting. Right? It's the same idea. I can have these phrases, like an A, A, B, you know, phrase where like the, the, these two play off each other and then it gets a little different. However it is that I want to structure it, I'm never losing the conversation, right? So if I have... first two phrases played off of each other the beginning of that third phrase sort of had that that, that same motif and then moved into something a little different and then it brought back around you know to, to, to sort of close it out great you know I could something a little different, a C down there, right? And it, it, these are the ways that our ideas can flow without losing the point. Um, when you start losing 
this. You're not playing off of what you've done before. And, and I'm going to reiterate by practicing direct repetition, direct repetition with a call and response, direct repetition with a call and response, and then the, the four tones and the five tones to get neutral, you know, a neutral phrase, not a, not a, 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 a tension, not a resolution. Uh, direct repetition, changing the notes, but the rhythm is direct, and then and then making the rhythm play off of each other, but not quite perfectly. You're, you're never going to lose yourself within the guitar solo because you're going to know exactly what you just said within the guitar solo, right? Now, a big misconception, too, is when we hear a Hendrix... <laughs> That sounds like, if, if we're not quite skilled at this yet, that sounds like, it's not. It's, it's phrases, multiple phrases tied together. No pause in between, but there's still phrases. It's not even one long phrase. It's small phrases tied together. And that's why it doesn't sound like noodling when a guitar player does it, right? When a skilled guitar player does it. Um, but but to to our untrained ear, it does sort of just sound like a slew of notes within the pentatonic, you know. Um, so building up that vocabulary, never losing what you were just saying and what you're going to say, you know, uh, is 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 always going to make that that really interesting. Now, what is really cool is when we have those rhythmic phrases and you're doing a lot of direct rhythmic repetition, whatever it is. You know, we were all already saying that, like, you want tension, resolution, tension, resolution. That's great. If you're constantly giving tension, resolution, tension, resolution, it's going to get tiring. And you're going to need to even switch that up. Um, that's the same with uh, our rhythmic phrases, right? If everything, if you're playing two rhythmic phrases, awesome. Two rhythmic phrases, awesome, right? That pattern, we have to be switching up the pattern, you know, uh, one thing that I really like to do is sticking to, and this is even a more of a modal thing, but, but within the pentatonic, sticking to something that is nice and slow, and digestible, you know, for the listener. Maybe now right, that has a lot of construction to it, right, or a lot of, a lot of direct, I know I keep saying it, direct repetition, you know, that sort of thing. Maybe now is the time to... get a little bit looser with what I'm doing rhythmically, you know? So I'm sort of like very, uh, very constructive and thought out in, 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 in one sense, even though it's improvisation, right, and then getting a little loose with it, right? And then I have those two roads to go back and forth with, right? So I'm not staying on one end of that. Same with tension, resolution, tension, resolution. All right, let me do a couple neutrals. Like, let me let me be mixing this up. Am I playing uh, too much of the same rhythmic pattern? Okay, let me vary it up. Let me do, you know, an A, B, A, B phrase, right? And then switch to something that doesn't even have a pattern for a second, right? So we're sort of giving pattern and then taking it away and giving pattern and then taking it away. Um, and what happens is for the most part, I don't think that I have a client or have ever had a client that was starting with the pentatonic usually was either taught it by a guitar, a guitar teacher that didn't tell them why they were learning it. Just, Hey, learn the scale, you know, um, or, or learned it because somewhere on YouTube or Facebook or something, they, 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 figured the pentatonic was what they were supposed to learn. Um, it, for the most part, they'll, they'll, they'll come to me, whether it's, it's, it's in the course or just like as, a, as a private client, um, and it will just sort of be this, this you know, chaotic. That, that's usually what it is, right? It's, it's pretty chaotic. And we just need to con get, the, 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 um, get all of that nice phrasing and repetition out of them. I have had guitar players... One in particular, one client uh, was a shredder, and he could absolutely shred. I mean, I'm not much of a shredder or sweet picker. You know, I, I, when I'm doing my, you know, Spanish stuff, you know, I'll do like the, the tremolo picking um, and all that stuff. Uh, not too much of a like kick on the overdrive and, and, and sweet picking stuff, you know. So he was really good, but he, 
did not know what he was playing. He was just learning. Uh, it was in a metal cover band. And I mean, this guy was playing, you know, absolutely great Megadeth and some Metallica. There was some Avenged Sevenfold solos in there. He's doing a great job, what, is what I'm saying. And when we were trying to boil it down, I had to get him all the way down to like, listen, man, I'm gonna do this, right? And what I want you to do, you're not even allowed to play the guitar. You have to clap a rhythm and then clap the same rhythm again and then pick a new rhythm and then clap the same rhythm. Uh, he was just so so not used to his brain working in that improvisational way where we're playing rhythmically off of what it was that we just did. So I have taken people from the very bottom and, and we could sort of build up and that's when we start getting um, a little bit of this vocabulary. Um, and, and the best part too is when you get into this, you're gonna start hearing it, right? And then whenever you're learning a guitar solo, right? You're not just learning the solo and the notes of the solo, but you're sort of learning the why it is that we're doing it. I mean, that's the same when we get over, you know, playing over changes, um, you know, where we're putting our arpeggios, why we're hitting specific notes over what changes, you know what I mean? Um, you just start learning the whys of your favorite guitar solos, and that's where it gets really important. So, so, so I don't keep talking. <laughs> Put a backing track on and go through the steps. Direct repetition, call and response from part one. You know what I mean? Uh, rhythmic, direct rhythmic repetition, changing up the notes, not worrying too much about the note choice, worrying a little bit more about the rhythm. Then start taking some of the note choice, right? And, and where, you know, if you have a rhythm, right? Da, 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 da. Okay, do I want that to climb up? Do I want it to go down? Do I want it to sort of stay in the same area? You'll start hearing these things out. Um, and, and, and that sort of direct repetition, then vary it. So you're almost playing the same, the same um, rhythmic phrases, right? Change the rhythmic phrases now, and A, a completely different phrase for B, and then go back to A. You know, can you dig that back out? Is is that still, can you carry that conversation through or is what you're playing now completely lost? You know, and, and that's just like this. What'd you just do? Oh, I don't know. Because we're not thinking in that way. You have to know what you just did to be able to play off of it, which is why this repetition is good. So try those steps. This is gonna be the part two. Um, I love it. We're gonna get into some really cool stuff for part two three how to how to play killer pentatonic solos um, i hope you guys dug it and uh, any questions comments whatever go ahead and uh, and shoot them over